Hello, everybody. My name is Brooke Haggerty. I am the executive director here at Vonalytics. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am so excited to share a quick recap of our 2020 accomplishments, a sneak peek of our 2021 plans. And finally, at the end, I will save time for a special Q&A. We sourced a ton of great questions this week, and we might not get to all of them in this broadcast, but I'm going to try my best. If you didn't get to submit your questions, please go ahead and do so in the comments. It's not too late. Our communications and development manager, Casey Reardon, is monitoring the chat. So any questions you have, go ahead and pop them in the comments below, and either I or Casey will be sure to answer everyone individually. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. 2020 was, uh, as we all know, uh, not the year we expected it to be, but I am so proud of what Phonolytics was able to accomplish this year and indeed what the entire movement was able to do. I'm so proud of our resiliency and creativity in the face of everything that came in 2020. So I applaud all of our colleagues in the movement to a year well done in spite of everything we were up against. But at Phonolytics, we were um, ready for the challenge and we had quite a productive year. We completed seven original studies. We looked at the effect of reduce versus go veg messaging on meal choice. We were among the first to do a COVID-19 poll and we gauged the public's understanding of the virus's relationship to animals, to our treatment of animals for food and gauged what the public intended to do in terms of diet change or donations to charity. So our COVID poll was uh, very timely and popular this year we also did a very important study looking at advocate retention and turnover. Our movement is only as strong as the advocates who make up the work we do. So it's really important we feel to support the advocates doing the important work for the animals. And we found a lot of great insights as to why people leave either their roles or the movement entirely. So be sure to check out our advocate retention study. We also published the first in what will be a line of research looking at chicken and fish suffering. Specifically, the first study we did in this line of research examines the beliefs people have about these animals and whether or not people are willing to take action to protect them. So, for example, by making a diet pledge or signing a welfare petition. And since these animals are killed in such huge numbers, we do feel strongly about uh, putting out great research to support the work advocates are doing. So stay tuned for more on that line of research in 2021. And we also did a study with our friends at Farm Sanctuary. We teamed up with them and wanted to get to the bottom of the debate about the effectiveness of farm sanctuaries. What do they do in terms of changing people's minds, attitudes, uh, diet habits? And our tour found really encouraging results. So if you are working in uh, the sanctuary space, or if you have any doubts whatsoever about uh, the value and importance of sanctuaries, be sure to check out our farm sanctuary study uh, that we just released a few months ago. So that is a quick summary of our original research. Casey is going to drop a link in the comments below sharing a quick access to all those studies and more. Be sure to check those out. We have key findings, implications for advocates, um, quick summarized data so you don't have to spend too much time finding the information you need to make your advocacy stronger. In addition to our original research, we also were up to quite a bit with our research library, which contains not only our study summaries, but also our other resources, including our Phonolytics Fundamentals and our new Phonolytics Explains video series. So we added over 200 new study summaries this year and over 50 blogs to our library. Again, our study summaries, they're easily digestible. We know your time is precious and valuable. So if you need data but don't have time to sift through the academic journals, uh, check out our library. We cover basically every topic in the animal advocacy space. So head on over to our library to learn everything you didn't know you wanted to know about animal uh, issues. 
We also produced two new, brand new issues of our fundamental series. This is our collection of visual, interactive, fully sourced infographics on the basically primer topics in animal protection. So we have our farmed animal fundamentals, our animals used in research fundamentals, companion animal fundamentals, and this year our content director Carl created new wildlife fundamentals and new zoonosis fundamentals. So check those out. They're great to share, really important resource, resource whether or not you are just starting your advocacy or you're a seasoned advocate. Our fundamentals are a really terrific opportunity to, for you to share um, important and unsettling uh, data about um, animal welfare. We also launched a brand new resource called our Faunalytics Explains video series. We know that not everybody likes to read reports, and so along this vein, we developed new short videos under two minutes that dive into great research from our library that we think will be even more important and impactful for advocates. So we published two Faunalytics Explains videos this year and have big plans to continue that series next year, so stay tuned. We also started doing live Q&As following the release of select studies. We know that research can be a little bit abstract sometimes, and so we want to help advocates transform the data we find from the page to your advocacy. And we do that in a few ways. One of them is through our new Q&As. So stay tuned for more Facebook Live events like this one where we dive into the studies we produce, making sure that you understand and can apply the data we find to your advocacy. And along that vein, we also continue to offer our office hours. And in fact, use of our office hours program skyrocketed in 2020. We are so excited about it. We just started doing this recently. And our office hours give advocates and organizations an opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one feedback, support, advice on anything you might need, whether you have a research question, you're designing your own study, or you're looking for a stat we are here to help you. So our office hours are free for advocates. They're pro bono, they're weekly. Uh, Casey's gonna drop the link in the comments below. If you haven't visited our office hours, please do, we're here to help. I promise we won't bite. We're excited to learn what you're up to and how we can support your effort. And this year, we also welcomed new team members. We brought on two new board members to add to the wealth of experience our directors bring to the organization. And I am thrilled to say that we brought on a brand new communications and development manager, Casey, who's interacting in the comments below. Having someone to help us bridge our work to the animal advocacy community has really helped make our work uh, more impactful, it's helped us be more effective, and so Casey is here to make sure that we are serving you, our advocate community. If you ever have a question, don't want to pop into office hours, Casey is always ready to uh, lend a helping hand, so don't hesitate to reach out to her if you need anything at all. All right, the last thing I want to share about 2020 is the efforts we've been making to improve our own understanding of our impact and measurement. While that's not necessarily as exciting uh, to the public, it's extremely important, I think, that we do everything we can to understand what our research is doing for the community, for the animal advocacy community, how are we helping, what impact are we having, but that can be very difficult when what we do uh, is intangible, it's indirect, so how do we measure that? And we've done a lot of work to try to answer that question and address that issue. So we just launched a new impact center. It's a work in progress, but I'm really excited about it. And there you'll find a new blog we did called Evaluating Our Effectiveness at Faunalytics. Be sure to check that out, and we would love to hear from you if you have other ideas. Uh, we're always trying to learn how we can grow and improve. But on that note, I will say that our 2020 community survey that we did where we request feedback from the advocates who use our resources, um, we got some great results and I'm really encouraged and I think we're going in a really positive direction to be there for the advocates who need our research. 95% of respondents said our work was high quality, 81% said it was very or extremely valuable. 
and 71% said that it's directly helped guide advocacy decisions. And those are very encouraging numbers. We obviously have um, opportunities to improve, so we're excited to take uh, that challenge head on in 2021 and uh, do even better for you. So stay tuned. That was just a brief overview of what we got up to in 2020. If you didn't, uh, if you missed any of it or didn't get to read all of our studies, be sure to check out our year in review. Our 2020 year in review was just published uh, recently and it has all the great details I just went over plus more. So check that out. It'll be dropped in the comments below. I am going to switch over to our 2021 plans. I'm particularly excited about this because we have so much that we want to get done and we're in a position to do it. So I just can't wait. And I'll pause real quick here to say thank you to anyone who supported our work in 2020, uh, donated recently to support our work in 2021. You're making all of this possible. So thank you for your support. All right, so in 2021, our original research is an ambitious lineup, but we really feel that our work is uh, connected to the advocacy community, that it will benefit your campaigns, and we're hopeful that it'll make a difference for you. So first up, right out the gate, we're going to release a study on Twitter trends in animal protection. So for all of you social media managers and marketing directors out there, stay tuned for that study. We're also going to be doing an important line of research uh, investigating the barriers and supports to farmed animal advocacy in China. As we all probably know, the number of animals slaughtered for food in China is staggering, just as it is here. And so we want to make sure we're doing our part to help advocates around the world. And I'm excited about this line of research. We are tackling it in two stages. The first stage is going to be interviews with advocates working on advocacy in China. And that will directly inform stage two of our study where we interview uh, or survey rather the Chinese public. So stay tuned for that. Again, two part study uh, will be published in 2021. We're also going to be following up on our work to reduce chicken and fish suffering. As I mentioned earlier, we did a study about the beliefs people have about these animals and whether or not people are willing to take action to protect them. And that study was done in the United States. So what we have planned for 2021 is we're going to team up with our friends at Mercy for Animals and replicate that study in other countries, uh, Brazil, India, Canada, and China. Analytics is also going to examine uh, how we can turn these negative beliefs into results for animals. How can we capitalize on positive beliefs? So stay tuned for more in that entire line of research in the coming year. I'm also thrilled that we are going to publish our longitudinal study on supporting new vegans and vegetarians. We have been collecting data for quite some time, and I am thrilled to say that we have so much great information to share with you. Our longitudinal study wrapped up and it looked at supporting new vegans or rather what uh, vegans and vegetarians experience in those crucial early months of their diet change. And in 2014, Faunalytics did a study where we found that a huge percentage of people actually lapse. People go back to consuming animal products. So really important that our movement have the data and the research and insight to uh, retain new vegans and vegetarians in their journey. So stay tuned, we're publishing that study in multiple phases. We're also going to be looking at the relative effectiveness of different advocacy strategies. It's an ambitious, ambitious study where we examine multiple tactics, things like leaflets and seeing graphic materials. What impact is this having both short and long term? So as a former grassroots advocate myself, I am very excited about that because it's such an ambitious project. We probably won't see that until a little bit later in the year, um, but stay tuned. It's going to be, I think, really helpful for both big organizations and small grassroots advocates alike. And then mid-year, I am thrilled to say we are going to go through our second ever research prioritization process. So in recent years, we've started to formalize how we choose the original research studies we tackle. There are hundreds, if not thousands of questions we would love to address, but we only have so much time and resources. So we really try to be methodical about how we choose the original research we cover. 
and there's a lot of ways to go about that. Our research director, Joe, has done a phenomenal job at updating and revising our prioritization and selection process. We want advocate feedback in that process. So if you would like to participate, if you are an advocate who has opinions about what research would be helpful for you in 2021 and beyond, please participate in this process. We would love to hear from you. Uh, Casey's going to drop a link below, uh, faunalytics.org slash prioritization. You can reach out to us anytime. And we really just are terribly excited to choose new studies uh, that we'll be tackling in the years to come. So stay tuned for that in either Q2 or Q3 of 2021. And speaking of our original research department, I am very excited to announce that we are hiring. We are looking for new talent. We are hiring research scientists. So if you or anyone you know is interested in spending time doing important research to support animal advocacy, we want to hear from you. The good news is the application deadline isn't until January 31st, so sit back and enjoy your holidays and afterward uh, check us out. We are very excited to grow our team and produce even more great work for you in the coming year. So we look forward to welcoming a new research scientist soon. And in 2021, we also have some exciting new resources for you to look out for. In addition to everything you've come to know and love, our research summaries, our faunalytics fundamentals, we are going to do some wonderful improvements to the research advice section of our website. Part of what we do is making sure that advocates can do their own research if they want. Uh, while we would love to do studies with everyone, we certainly can't, and we want to empower the animal advocacy community to tackle your own uh, analyses whenever possible. So not only can you go to our office hours, but you can go to our research advice section for a ton of great resources. Specifically, stay tuned, coming soon is going to be a full presentation on effective survey design. So you're not going to want to miss that if you're thinking about doing something like that in the coming year, but you're not necessarily an expert in the area. We'll have that presentation for you on the site. And later in the year, we're also planning to launch our new Research 101 videos, where we go over terms that, as an animal advocate, will probably be helpful for you to know, but you're not that familiar or comfortable with them. So stay tuned for more great resources on our research advice section. Again, in addition to new summaries, new fundamentals, and new Faunalytics Explains videos. So that's just a sneak peek of what we have in store for the coming year. Check out our 2021 plans blog to learn more. Casey's going to drop that in the link below. But again, ask any questions. If you missed the part about prioritization, we really want to have you involved in our new study selection process. So again, link should be in the comments below. Reach out. We want to include you. And we're really excited about what we'll produce in the year to come. So that is just a quick overview of what we have planned and what we accomplished this year. Before we dive into the Q&A, I just want to again thank you for engaging with our work. Whether you sign up for our newsletters and forward articles to your friends or like us on social media or donate, we are so grateful for you, for the efforts you're making to end animal suffering. Thank you for everything you're doing and we are so excited to be on your team and help you in the coming year. And one last thing before we go to the q and I'm sorry, I would be remiss if I didn't stop and thank uh, our donors specifically. We have some wonderful foundations who support us, the Animal Charity Evaluators, Center for Effective Altruism, ProVeg International, Culture and Animals Foundation, the Greenbaum Foundation, Park Foundation, Veg Fund, Lush, and Mobius, as well as several other anonymous donors and wonderful supporters. Thank you for making our work possible. All right, let's dive into the Q&A. So like I said, we saw some great questions over the last week. I hope that I get to yours. If I don't, please ask again in the comments below and we'll make sure we answer it either on the video here or in the comments. So First up is, what is your most underrated accomplishment from 2020? I would say the internal efforts we're making to improve our infrastructure is something that we and probably a lot of other organizations, um, 
leave underrated, if you will. We really can't do the wonderful programs and produce the important resources and research we do without our infrastructure in place. So a lot of what we did this year, updating our impact measurement model, developing a new strategic plan, revising our prioritization process, uh, updating our policies. This is all really important work that will just help us leap into the coming year uh, ready to go. So I'm very excited about that work we've done. It's not as flashy or exciting, uh, but very important, I think. Next question is, what was your most popular study in 2020? Uh, well, that's a tricky question because in terms of impact, uh, our studies are chosen for potential impact, and so they all have their own use and importance. But in terms of sheer popularity, views and engagement, Unquestionably, our COVID poll was the top of that list. People then and now, of course, COVID is on the mind. And so our COVID-19 and animals poll continues to be uh, the most popular resource of the year, if not perhaps uh, of uh, the last couple of years. But after that, our animal product impact scales was one of our most popular resources this year. One of our original studies, if you haven't seen it, I very much encourage you to check it out. For seasoned animal advocates, the data won't be surprising, but it's still eye-opening, uh, very harrowing study that shows just how many days of suffering and animals' lives are required to feed the U.S. one day per different animal-derived food product. So be sure to look at our animal product impact skills if you haven't already. Great resource to share with people uh, who are maybe on the fence about making a diet change but need a little encouragement. Uh, check us out uh, or check out the animal product impact uh, scales. And then the last or rather third uh, most popular resource was our global slaughter and statistics charts. Our content director, Carl, updated our figures with uh, updated UN FAO data, and it's just staggering. And so check out that resource. Our visual resources continue to be very popular, really eye-opening information that you're not going to want to miss if you didn't catch it earlier this year. Okay, next question is, what was Faunalytics' biggest challenge in 2020? Such a great question. Um, I would say an ongoing challenge, but also an ongoing opportunity is evaluating our own effectiveness. As I mentioned before, it's something we are working very hard to do better every day, every quarter, every year. And we've made tremendous efforts in this past year to better understand our own impact. But there is plenty of room to improve, opportunity to grow, and it continues to be an area where um, we will put our efforts to try to make sure we are demonstrating to you, our supporters, the impact we're having for, animal suffer for animals uh, suffering around the world. All right, next question is, do you have any plans to study effective institutional campaigns, government subsidies, and impact on animal agriculture, and other topics beyond individual activism? What an excellent question. The answer is maybe. As I said, we are going through our next prioritization process mid-2021. And because we tend to prioritize topics that affect many animals or can be used by many advocates, those are topic areas that we might study in the future. So please participate in our prioritization and selection process. If that's an area you want Faunalytics to spend our research focus on, we want to hear from you. So head on over to our website, um, sign up to participate or submit your ideas on our prioritization page, and we're really excited to weigh all of our opportunities in the coming year. All right, next question. I don't have a PhD, but I'm interested in the research scientist position. Will I be considered? I'm really glad we got this question. Yes, the answer is yes, we are considering candidates without a PhD. What we want is experience with conducting research, analyzing data, and communicating that information to a lay audience. And most importantly, a passion for our work, for ending animal suffering, for supporting animal advocacy. So if you have that passion and research experience but might not have the academic credentials, that's okay. We still want to hear from you, so please apply. Will you be hiring other positions in 2021? 
Unfortunately, right now we don't have plans to bring on other positions than the research scientist role. However, we are growing and um, optimistic, so who knows? I encourage you to uh, sign up for our newsletter if you're not already, or subscribe or follow our social media, which hopefully you are, and you won't miss any career opportunity announcements if you're following us on those platforms. Uh, speaking of social media, next question is, I'm not on Facebook very much. Do you have plans to expand? So I am thrilled to say we are on uh, a ton of platforms. We're on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Casey, our communications manager, is leading the charge to bring you wonderful quality content on all of those platforms. So follow us on whatever platform you're engaged with the most. We have lots of Twitter threads and Instagram stories to come, so stay tuned. All right, next question. What efforts have you made? Oh, great question. What efforts have you made to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in animal protection? Thank you to whomever asked this question. It's so important, and it's the question we should all be asking of each other, of all of us. So this year, I had the wonderful opportunity to attend Encompass's inaugural DEI Institute. I believe that was in March. And the team at Encompass did a terrific job helping to prepare me with training and resources to help our organization do better at promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion, not only here at Faunalytics, but within the animal protection as a whole. So for anyone who is unsure about your role or the role of your organization, what efforts you can take, I do encourage you to check out Encompass's DEI Institute. That led me to working with our staff to transform our SMART goals into SMARTY goals, where we include the aspect of inclusion and equity in our planning. And we also updated some of our policies. We've reviewed some of our internal practices and policies to just make sure that the culture is what we want it to be. I think we have so much stuff in place that's excellent and important, but looking at what we're doing through a lens of racial equity really helps us think about where we can improve and do even better. And on that note, we really started making a stronger effort to circulate research that is helpful to all animal advocates, not just white animal advocates. So we covered studies in our library on uh, cultural barriers to veganism, experiences of vegans of color, experience of experiences of vegan women over 50. Uh, we increased our coverage of global animal advocacy studies, uh, specifically non-Western studies. So that's just the beginning of our efforts in this area. And we're going to uh, continue working to improve. If you have any ideas for how we can improve or how we can do better at promoting DEI in animal protection, we would love to hear from you. So please uh, comment below or shoot us an email, info at Faunalytics. We would love to hear how we can do better in that front. All right, next question is, what are the research trends to look out for in 2021? I love it. The first thing I'll say is more research in general. Uh, as an organization that's been around for 20 years, since 2000, Faunalytics is absolutely witnessing a shift toward data-driven advocacy. People are interested in research. They're doing their own research. They want to team up with us. It is so exciting, and we are on board and can't wait to see more people apply research to their efforts. So that's the first trend uh, I anticipate for 2021. Beyond that, I bet we'll see more research in wild animal suffering and more research in areas that deal with the connection of different social justice issues. So animal advocacy with slaughterhouse workers, for example, I think we'll start to see more research and focus on those topics in the coming years. All right, we have time for one more question. If I want to do my own research, what topic should I choose to make the biggest impact for animals? Great question. We hear this a lot. We love that students and independent researchers really want to make sure from the start that they are focused on impact. You don't need to do this work again. So Faunalytics, as well as several of our colleagues in the space, have done our own prioritization processes to some extent. And we have a list of those different uh, prioritization 
priorities rather from different organizations on our research advice section. So you don't necessarily need to go through the prioritization process yourself. Uh, we are putting together a blog in early 2021 to answer this question directly to help students and independent researchers figure out what they want to tackle. So stay tuned, follow our blog in the coming months for more details. All right, I think that is all the questions we have time for today. I hope that I was able to get to everyone's. If I didn't, again, please drop them in the comments below and we will address them there. Or you can always reach out to us anytime, info at faunalytics.org, Casey at faunalytics.org. We're excited to hear from you and excited to help you. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in, not just today, but for 2020, we had such an incredible year. It was for you. It was because of you. So thank you for all you do for faunalytics and for animals around the world. And in the meantime, from all of us at faunalytics, we wish you a very happy, healthy and safe holiday and new year. We'll see you in 2021.